Hello, people. In the last video, I snagged the four Zora eggs in the pirate's fortress and took a picture of a Gerudo pirate. If you did not snag a pictograph of one of them, you're going to have to go back to the fortress and do this. Annoying, I know, but you'll see why in a moment. You want to warp to Great Bay Coast and empty your bottles in the marine research lab and then go back outside. Along the coast itself, there are two buildings to the far east. The southern one has a sign that labels it as the Fisherman's Hut, which is our destination. Inside, you can have a chat with the fisherman himself, but he'll just mutter about how bad the fishing is right now. The waters of Great Bay have suddenly gotten murky, as well as incredibly warm. This also means that you can't swim out very far, or else you will get lost and return to shore. This storyline element is an excuse that conveniently allows the game developers to keep you from swimming beyond the boundaries of the play area. Sweet. Our next objective is to talk to the seahorse in the fishbowl. It asks you to take it back to Pinnacle Rock, which is where we have to go next. The fisherman explains that seahorses are incredibly rare, so he's only willing to give it up if you can manage to cough up a picture of, oh, I don't know, a Gerudo pirate to the north? That's obviously hard to do, but we just came from there, so if you took a picture from them with me back in the last video, you can fork that over. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back north, re-enter the pirate's fortress, and get a good shot of one of the ladies in purple. Okay, real quick comment, if he does not accept your picture, the most likely reasons are that either you were too far away, or you chopped off a chunk of her. You have to get her whole body in the picture, like, try and get her whole spear and everything too. I don't know if that matters or not either, but I assume it's like, points, like her head and like her torso and like her legs, like, you have to get the whole thing in order for it to count. So anyways, so if he doesn't accept it, that's probably why you have to go retake the picture. It's just frustrating. Once you have successfully traded, you will get the seahorse in a bottle. It will immediately ask you to take it back to Pinnacle Rock. The game is somewhat vague on exactly where this location is, but it's between those two giant pillars here in Great Bay Coast. As you approach the pillars themselves, you'll meet up with a Zora who is floating at the surface. You can speak with him and he'll describe seahorses, saying that they're the only ones that know how to successfully navigate to Pinnacle Rock. With that, turn around and swim through the pillars. So this is the outer pinnacle rock area, and I just love this sign here. It labels it as the sea snake layer up ahead, but it warns about the murky water. So that's just like, here it lies the home of the flesh-eating giant sea creatures, but watch out! The water's a little murky this time of year. Oh no! <laughs> There's a much bigger deal, apparently. Next, you want to whip out that bottled seahorse and dump it out. It will thank you and ask you to follow it to the lair. Through the murky water? Are you crazy? There's a ton of signs here, I suppose, because others have encountered this invisible maze before, even though the whole murky water thing supposedly only started a few days ago, but anyway. We need to travel along this secret path correctly and not touch any of the invisible, you get lost areas. If you deviate from the correct path, you will start over the area, you'll get lost and have to start over again. Uh, so just be sure to stay close to the seahorse. Technically, if you know which signs you need to touch, you technically don't need the seahorse at all, and I have a little image on the left that shows the locations of the signs and the path you need to take. Don't know if you Ocarina of Time veterans caught onto this yet, but this is quite literally the exact same gameplay mechanic as the Haunted Wasteland in that game. They just changed the color of the sand and placed it underwater. I must say, though, that the previous one made more sense because it was in a vast desert and you weren't trying to reach a giant landmark we can see right in front of us. How do you get lost walking in a straight line for less than a minute? I don't understand. <laughs> Alrighty, so now we need to kill these sea snakes. There is this giant pit that has eight holes in the wall and that each contain a sea snake, also known as deep pythons according to Tattle's description. They come out once you get close trying to grab you and nibble on you for a bit, and they aren't hard as much as awkward to defeat, and they can only grab you with their mouth when they go up pretty far. So first of all, I'm just going to show how they can eat you. That was intentional, okay? <laughs> anyway, the trick is to come at them from the side. Their tender neck is vulnerable, so there's two different ways you can fight them, both by hitting their neck. The first way is to use the R button to use your electric attack uh, and swim around and hit them repeatedly with it. So just be careful to be far enough away that they don't nab you on their way back out. Once they're defeated, you can snag the stuff that is hiding behind them. Some of them have chests containing rupees, and other ones have jars that contain magic. So if you're using the electrical attack in particular, you'll use quite a bit of magic, so you'll probably want to smash these jars so that you can get some of your green stuff back. The other way to defeat them is to stand on the edge of the entrance itself, and then charge up your fins to release the double cutters and smack their neck. And now this method is a little more awkward, but it's also less dangerous, and you don't use any magic this way, so if you're really conservative and don't want to use your magic, then this works as well. Inside this one, I found one of the three Zora eggs that is found down here. So there's a total of eight sea snakes slash deep pythons down here, but only three of them actually have Zora eggs. 
You can peek in each hole to see which ones have eggs or not, so you can kill as little as possible and only get the silver eggs, but if you want to help the seahorses, you're going to have to kill all of them, and I want to get that piece apart, so I'm going to be killing all of these sea snakes. And that's pretty much all there is to it. This is a very lengthy process, and I'm going to be fast-forwarding through the rest of this. This part of this game is can be a little frustrating because of the whole egg thing. It's just it's so lengthy, and you have to complete both Pinnacle Rock and the Pirate's Fortress in the same three-day cycle. This is especially true if you're confused about where to go. It just takes forever. In addition to that, I think I can speak for everyone when I say that sinking down to the seafloor and having giant creatures that lunge out at you is kind of freaky. <laughs> Okay, so the seahorse earlier, I didn't really have time to talk about this, he asked a favor of you. It turns out that there is another seahorse that is trapped somewhere inside the sea snake lair, and it's asking you to kill all of the giant dangerous creatures to save its friend. So in other words, you want us to barge into their home, murder them, and try and find your friend who may or may not be here. That seems a little unfair to the deep pythons, I don't know. Doop you, just taking a nap down here, and ah, it's Link! Ah! <laughs> Isn't that a little, uh, cruel? <laughs> Once you have killed all eight of the deep pythons, the two seahorses will be reunited. Apparently, they're more than just friends. Ooh. Anyway, they'll gift you with a piece of heart, and thanks for all of your hard work. Dang straight. <laughs> for me, this also happens to be the last Zora egg, so be sure you snag them all before you leave with your bottles, and hopefully you have at least three bottles so that you don't have to make multiple trips. Now, if you've been following along with me, you should have four bottles at this point, so if you don't have that many and would like to know how to get them, you should check out the bottles guide on our website at ZeldaDungeon.net, or, you know, watch these videos and follow along with me. At this point, unfortunately, we cannot play our ocarina underwater, so we're going to have to swim all the way back up. So you'll automatically appear back at the start of the area between the pillars if you get lost at sea. So you want to swim up to the top of Pinnacle Rock and swim out into the open area on any side, and then just once you make it out there, you'll appear back at the beginning. So just turn around and swim back through the pillars to return to Great Bay Coast. As I've mentioned a few times before, um, while swimming with the Zora Mask, as long as you're a little bit below the surface of the water, you can swim upwards to jump out of the water. I call this dolphin jumping because of how it looks. But you can use this trick to land on top of platforms. It's pretty helpful, especially for the upcoming temple, and in particular for the boss of that temple. If you'd like to perfect that skill, this platform right here is an excellent place to practice. Go ahead and enter the marine research lab and climb onto the tank and dump these eggs in as well. I already got the first four Zora eggs from the Pirate's Fortress in the last two videos, and now I have the remaining three from Pinnacle Rock. Once you have placed all seven Zora eggs inside the tank, then Dr. Mizumi will yell excitedly for you to come down. You want to go stand next to him, and you'll witness the birth of the Zora tadpoles. As with all of the compass directions, there is a song we have to learn for this area. In order to do this, though, you're going to have to wear the transformation mask for this area, so put on the Zora mask and use your ocarina to learn the song the babies have to teach us. Hmm. 
Alrighty, so in the past several videos, we got all of the Zora eggs and learned the song for this area. I'm sure you all don't want to do any more of that again. So rather than running around further, I highly recommend you take this opportunity to put your rupees in the bank and play the Song of Time to save. Mm -hmm. 